Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to continue on with our line traces and look at kind of adding damage to things um, and stuff you can do like that. So, what we'll do is we'll go into our first person character here, and you see we've got this little fire event that fires out our line trace. If we check it out, right, it fires it when we um, left click. So there we go, kind of cool. Uh, but now, as you'll have noticed, right, when you when you hit something, it makes this little red square. And what that is, is that location um, is where um, it generates all these, uh, well, what's called a hit result. So that's this little out hit here. And what you can do is drag off and say break hit result. And it will give you all this information uh, related to the hit. Okay, so some things that um, are usually used pretty often is things like the hit location um, or the, the impact normal, you know, the normals. Uh, those are used pretty common. Um, other things like the hit actor, or the hit bone are used pretty often, like especially the hit actor if you're causing damage. Um, I know a lot of advanced games will use the hit bone for simulating kind of uh, physics reactions when an enemy or something gets hit. You know, you can specify a bone name on a skeleton uh, to kind of simulate physics on for a second, and that can be kind of cool. Uh, but for this tutorial, what we're going to focus on is um, simply applying damage to a hit actor, okay? So what we'll do is uh, we're simply going to drag out, okay? And we're going to type apply damage, okay? So there's a couple different types of damage you can add. There's just generic damage. There's point damage, um, which isn't really that much different from regular generic damage. Uh, then there's radial damage, which, you know, adds damage in a kind of a circular area. Uh, and then there's radial damage with fall off, which, you know, f has damage that decreases as it gets farther to the edge. So uh, those are just some values you can play around with, but we're going to use the applied damage. Okay. So this takes in a damaged actor, some base damage, and some other things. Um, all we're going to do is just take our hit actor here, and we'll plug it into the damaged actor. Okay, now next we'll go ahead and just add some like base damage of, I don't know, maybe like 25. This is just a completely arbitrary value, totally depends on your game. But basically now that we've called this event, right, on, on whatever actors that we want to be kind of damageable, uh, we will have to go into their blueprints and add an event any damage. All right, so basically when that actor that gets hit receives some damage, we'll be able to kind of, you know, maybe decrease its health or, I don't know, destroy it or just do, you know, do something based on that. So that's what we'll do next. Uh, we'll go ahead and go out to the content browser and we'll right click and uh, I'm going to create a blueprint class of type actor. It will call BP underscore uh, target. Okay. So we'll open this up really quick and all we're going to add is a static mesh. I'm just going to call it target. Okay, and then over in the details panel, I'm going to use the shape, uh, shape underscore cube. Okay, and that is in the starter content. So if you don't have starter content enabled, you might not have it, but um, you know, just find something that'll work. Okay, and now that we have the cube, we're going to go to our event graph and just get rid of this stuff. And now we can add that event any damage. Okay, so when this object gets hit, it will, you know, be able to generate this any damage event. Okay. And now, you know, for the damage. So what we'll do here is we'll add a variable that we will call health. We'll change this to a float. And we'll be able to use this now to kind of apply damage. Next, we'll go ahead and set the health here to a default value of about 100. Okay. And now to apply damage, all we'll do is we will get our health. And we'll say health minus... So float minus float, and we'll subtract this damage value that's coming in. So if we recall over here, right, we're going to be passing through 25 to this actor, okay? And then we'll drag out and say set health, and we'll set it to the result of this subtraction, okay? Then we're going to want to check if this is less than or equal to zero, okay? Then we'll do a branch, and basically, if the health of this object here is less than or equal to zero, then we are going to um, uh, destroy it, basically. So we'll just destroy the actor. There we go. Fantastic. 
Okay, so now uh, we'll go back and just double check that everything's good. Okay, and we'll go ahead and add some of these targets into the level. Add a couple like that. Okay, now we can press play. And basically, if we shoot these uh, four times, because it's 25 you know, damage per hit and they have 100 health, um, then on the fourth one they should be destroyed. So we'll go ahead and do it four times, and there we go, it got destroyed. So one, two, three, four, it's gone. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right, there we go. They're all getting destroyed, awesome. And just like that, you can see how easy it is to kind of apply damage to different things in your game. So really, you know, if you have a bunch of AI, you know, literally you can just use this same exact method and when you hit an AI just call this event any damage and essentially do the same thing and then you know you don't have to destroy them after they're dead you could just make them stop moving and fall down or you know do any any number of things alright so in the next one we'll go ahead and look at kind of playing some effects at the hit locations and doing some other cool stuff so thanks for watching and uh, if you like the video like or subscribe and we will see you in the next one